Hello and welcome back to GCS Machinery. Today's video is going to be a little bit different to our normal video. I'm going to try and explain why we buy the brand of trailer that we do, the sort of things that we look for in a trailer and the specifications of trailer that we buy to suit the needs that we do. So now the theory is a farm trailer is a tin box on wheels and that principle applies to all of them. Now when a farmer goes to buy his trailer or trailer the chances are he'll keep it for 10 years and he'll buy it for his specific needs. So for example if he's a cereal, cereal um, farmer they will, they will buy a grain trailer. If you are a silage contractor, obviously you'd have a little bit of a different spec trailer. If you are a vegetable grower, you will have a, a different spec trailer again. Um, and there's sort of quite a few variations and things that, that farmers will go and buy for their specific needs. Now, being a hire business, we try to cater for as many of those different sectors of agriculture as we possibly can with our fleet of trailers. So we, we, we try and buy a trailer that will do corn, will do root vegetables, um, do silage, wood chip, whatever. So big variation. So we try to make sure that we get the right spec that we can utilize that trailer for as many months of the year in as many sectors of agriculture while it's in our ownership. Now there are many very very good UK based agricultural trailer manufacturers and also in Ireland. Now we at the moment run Stuart trailers. We have, well in fact we have a very large fleet of Stuart trailers. We have some Richard Western trailers and that fleet is growing and we also have Bailey made locally in Sleaford we also operate some Richard Larrington trailers we also have some JPM trailers and we have some Brocken trailers although I'm not quite sure I pronounced that exactly right um, all of those are brilliant now there are other, there are other manufacturers that we don't have in the fleet Marshall fantastic trailer um, K2, I don't have much, we've never run a K2 trailer, but we hear from people that are very, very good. And, and there are many others. So in the UK, we're very, very blessed that there are so many good trailer manufacturers that we have to choose from to buy a trailer. So what do we look for buying a trailer? Well, a trailer for us has to be as universal as possible. So for example, Stuart. This one here, for example, is a Stuart grain trailer and it has the high sides. Ignore the, the sides, it has high sides. Now, for root crop work, those sides would be too tall. So, Stuart do a slightly lower version side on, on the 16 tonne, which is called a 16L, which has lower sides. So, for vegetable work, it's ideal. It can still be used for grain and the solid sides of an 18 tonne still fit that trailer. So that trailer then can be used for root crop work, corn, silage, and wood chip, biomass, etc. So it becomes a very versatile trailer. So, so how do we decide what trailer we're going to buy? Well, the begin beginning of our process is probably totally reversed to most people. Now, we actually go and look at the used market and see what is on the used market and the prices that those trailers are now on the market for. Now, at that point, we then will go back, try to go back three years and work out what that trailer cost when it was new. So try to work out the, how much that trailer has devalued in three to four years. Okay. Now we'll do that, that, that's relevant to whatever brand of trailer, whether it's Stuart, Richard Weston, Bailey, etc. So the most important factor for me buying a trailer is to be able to get out of it 
at the end of our ownership. Now, we would probably keep a trailer for probably three, maybe four years. Um, a little bit dependent on what the trailer's been doing, etc. But three, maybe four years, not normally any longer. We do sometimes sell trailers off earlier if we have a customer come along, wants to buy a trailer. We'll certainly talk about um, if they wish to buy one. So how we purchase a trailer is totally opposite, I think, to a lot of people, because um, in, in my opinion, it sounds very, to me it sounds complicated. I'm probably not getting this across very well, but we have to start on the other end. Now, all of these trailers are built to a very, very good high standard, okay? And there's nothing between them really on quality. They're all good, um, and we have no problems at all with hiring any out now. The reason why we run different brands is several reasons. One is some of our customers are specific in what they actually want. And this is normally stems from where they are in the UK and what trailers they have been using. So if you go to an area that is very strong in Bailey, the customer's been using a Bailey trailer, then their preference is probably going to be that we would like to run a Bailey trailer. Now, that also comes into account where Perhaps a potato grower, a vegetable grower is tipping into a hopper and the hopper is a set height and they've got their hopper set up to the, the tipping height of a Bailey trailer. So if that's the case, they want Bailey. You go to other areas in the UK where maybe Richard Weston is, is a predominant brand um, where, and then their customer then will maybe ask for Richard Weston. Now that often is dictated by the dealerships in the area. Um, there are certain areas you maybe go to Essex in Kent, sorry, Essex, where um, the, the, the dealership for Richard Weston is very strong. Um, and you may well see that more of our customers in the area would therefore like to hire Richard Weston. But it is what, it, you know, it's, we try to cater for everybody's different tastes of trailer and different brands and, and, what, and what they want. Um, but equally I say, all of these trailers are of similar, similar standard, similar quality, and we have no problem anywhere with hiring any particular brand out to anybody. So every trailer we buy, we try to buy them with a top specification. So they would all have air brakes, hydraulic brakes, hydraulic rear door, flotation tires, although the tires we can supply trailers on super singles and if we do a lot of road work in the winter months with the trailer, we'll try and solve it on super single. So we try to buy a very, very high spec trailer, um, sprung draw bars. And the reason we do this is because when we come to sell that trailer, it hopefully makes it more of a um, desirable trailer for our customers to buy. Um, so it's important to us to have a very, very high spec trailer, very well built. Um, we take a lot of pride in our hire fleet, the fact that, for example, this here, we, we, a trailer comes back from hire, we paint the drawbars bars in, we keep them, we keep them looking in. We, a trailer comes in from hire, we go through it front to back, and we generally try to keep this trailer in absolute as pristine condition as we can possibly do that. So that at a later date, when we come to sell it, again, we have a good exit strategy and the trailer looks, looks the part, okay? Um, we certainly find that machinery from higher companies is normally better maintained than someone that owns it. Um, in, from, my, from my point of view, if we're going to send this trailer to, I don't know, North Scotland, out on hire, it's in our interest to make sure that this trailer goes out in absolutely the best condition we, in order we can get it. For us to go have a, a silly problem, and especially if the trailer's out of warranty and we have to travel to Scotland or pay someone in Scotland to come and do something, that is very silly, a light not working or whatever, it's in our interest to make sure it leaves here absolutely as best as we can get it. Now, <laughs> another point that we do look at with these trailers, which may seem very trivial to a lot of people, but it's how easy is it to fit the sided sides? And why that may not sound important to most people, <laughs> to us actually, it is very important. We put these sided sides on and off these trailers frequently more frequently than we'd like to do really but for example when corn harvest is finished last year we fitted sided sides to probably around 50 odd trailers 
in a very, very short window of time, within a few days. So if a side is, if set side is size is quick and easy to fit, that for us is a huge bonus, massive bonus. Um, I think some of these sides, what we'd like to do, we'd actually take a bit of each of these manufacturers and put together to make the, the perfect side side, because we have things like the Richard Weston has fork slots, and we'll show you on, on the back of the trade in a moment, fork slots to pick the side size off with. Brilliant, makes your life a lot easier. Stuart is a very quick and easy set of size to fit, but it doesn't have the forklift slots, so we have to chain those. So there's also, but, but they are quick to do. We can do, I think, a Richard Weston will take us probably an hour, maybe an hour a bit longer to fit than a set of Stuart sides. Um, that hour may not sound very important, but when you're doing 50 odd sets in a week, it becomes quite important. So little details like that we do look for on a trailer and make our life a lot different. Another cracking example we look for on a trailer, a little detail, is, is we'll show you on this Stuart trailer. Now most people when they buy a farm trailer will have it delivered by the dealer, manufacturer, or whatever. And, or they go and collect it from the dealership. But it may go on a lorry once or twice in its lifetime. We put trailers on and off lorries all over the UK frequently. We have, and we have outside hauliers, move trailers for us, etc. Now, one very small detail of a point that makes our life so much easier are these training points. And whilst I totally appreciate it, it does seem very trivial. Having training points like this on the Stuart mean that we can chain this trailer from the ground. So we eliminate the risk of having to climb onto a low loader to chain it on. It is very, very fast to chain on. We've got big hooks, big eyes that fit into there. They're the same fitted on the rear of the trailer. And we can chain this trailer down in, in a few minutes where if we have to start feeding chains over drawbars bars or over chassis, it marks the paintwork. It takes us a lot longer to do so. So every new trailer that we're having ordered and having built, we'll be having these on whatever brand, we'd, whatever brand trailer that will be. Sounds trivial, it's not, not to us. It makes life so much easier. Um, now, what I want about health and safety, when these trailers come back to us after every hire, they go through the workshop and we have a long checklist where we go through them in detail, everything we go, we go through. We check everything, everything on the trailer, basically. Now, there are some trailer safety schemes out there. Some of you may have heard of Tilly Pass, some of you may use that scheme. Um, it's not a scheme that we use here at GCS. We just do our own thing, really. But on the chassis of every trailer, if you want to go out, is a sticker put on or updated. Now, this sticker, A, gives our details on there, but it also gives details of the trailer. So when it was last inspected, what the tyre pressure should be, have the brakes been checked and who by, has it been greased? Who by? The lights have been checked. Hydraulics um, and airlines checked. And probably a very important one is the, the wheel nuts talked. We will talk the wheel nuts before every, any trailer leaves this, this yard. And on here, we put the setting of that. So at least 400 newton meters are there. Now, if this trailer's out on hire and the farmer, the usual farmer or industry or whoever has the trailer gets a puncher, the chances are they'll get a tyre company out to fix the puncture. But if the wheels are removed and they're not sure of the torque settings, they're on the chassis. So hopefully it will eliminate this guesswork of what we do. Now, something else I will point out we do to the trailers that when we, um, when we talk them up in the workshop here, we use different colour pens on them to show the wheel when it's being talked. Now, the different colours is the different person that's done that check. So, if we have a Fred, and Fred uses a white pen, or we have a Bob that uses a red pen, we know who has talked those wheel nuts up. So, it's a small detail that we do. It does work incredibly well. And equally, if, if the traders come back to us and we see that the, the marks have moved from the, onto the rim to the nut, we may just, you know, investigate, has there been an issue with the tyre, whatever. So it, it helps us in lots of ways. So back of the trailer, we'll just show you there the, 
there's the, the training eye at the back. And another important issue that we, we order, a rear draw bar is not a trailer. This rear draw bar here, is, we've got all the air points here. That enables us that if we go to move two silage trailers on the road, or any corn trailers, we can take two together. Fully legal, provided the trailers are empty, but it does make moving trailers around easy. Some of the silage contractors that come and hire trailers from us travel over from Ireland with their tractors, and they'll come in here, they'll pick up two trailers, and off they go to <laughs> some farm for our land. So uh, there we go. Now, we do pride ourselves in make, keeping our trailers in good order, and if something else we do, as you saw that we repaint the drawbars bars in on our trailers, if a trailer comes in here and the floor is starting to get the paint disappearing on the floor, we'll probably shot blast the floor and, and, and repaint it. Now, this trailer here is two years old, and if you look at the floor there, it's, it's still in very, very good order. Uh, now, if, that, if it starts to get any worse than that, we'll repaint that just to keep the trailer in absolute pristine condition. Now, just something else I will point out here, these yellow numbers that we put on our trailers. Now, I'll just explain what they mean. This is, these are GCS fleet numbers for ourselves. So just for our own, you know, and we put them on the front of the back of the trailer. So if the trailers are in a in line up in a row, we can look at the front of the back of the trailer and it'll tell us all we need to know. This trailer is a, obviously it's a Stuart. Now this is an 18S, that's the model number. It's an 18 ton trailer with short. This was num trailer number 05 of year 22. So this was the fifth trailer we bought in 22. And the D on the rear means it has a rear draw bar. Sometimes there'll be some variations on there, and we'll show you one too in a minute, that have a um, HS, which is a hydraulic sheet, or a single S, just for a manual sheet. But that makes life for us very, very simple. Um, look at the trailer when we know what a customer wants to get that trailer out. If you look up on the top of the tailgate there, the two forklift slots, whilst I appreciate they may not, <laughs> they may not mean not to some people, but they do make our life um, very, very, very simple. There are lots of factors that come in to me buying a trailer. It's not just go out and buy any which colour trailer. There are a lot of factors in it. Now, the other thing we have to find is that the dealer support to us is very, very important. Although, to be fair, we get very, very, very few warranty issues with a trailer. Um, they're all such a good standard these days, we really don't have any issues. And on the very occasion we have had issues, every one of these manufacturers has jumped and dealt with it, which is great. Um, we have to work with our, with our suppliers. Now, there are one or two trailer sort of manufacturers, dealers, that also do hire. That does cause us a, look, a bit of an issue because obviously we don't want to be competing with our supplier. So that is something we would certainly bear in mind when buying trailers, but it's certainly not a deciding factor. But it, it's just something that we feel that we, we don't want to be competing with our suppliers. We want to be working with our suppliers and build a relationship with those suppliers. Um, but on the whole, we certainly find that the, the manufacturers and dealers that are certainly um, helping us at GCS. So when we kind of buy a trailer, Yes, price is very important, very, very important with, with nowadays. But it's also the fact of how we get out of that trailer. Now, there are trailer manufacturers out there that are probably cheaper than all three of these brands we have here. Um, but the thing is with us, we have to be able to get out of it. So buying a very cheap trailer that would probably could easily do the job, if nobody wants to buy it, when we're finished with it, it's actually of no benefit to us. So we try to buy the best brands that we possibly can to ensure that we have that resale value and to ensure that we have that demand for a trailer at the end of it. Now, we would ensure that these trailers will look as not as good as they, almost as good as the day they arrived on this farm. Um, we, we are, say, as I said before, we're very meticulous about them. We paint drawbars bars in, we paint floors in, um, they get checked over. I mean, when they get when they come back from May season or, or veg at Christmas, 
They go through the workshops, they're checked over, anything on them that he's doing, we make a note of. They're greased, the brakes are checked. So they're sort of 90% ready to go now. I think the Richard Weston here hasn't quite had his drawbar paint on yet, but I think it hasn't been back very long. Um, and then they'll start to go back in again now, going through the finer details, getting them trailers absolutely put on Christmas. So, right, the next big issue with trailers, sheeting systems. Now, the game has changed over the last few years, where, um, particularly in the silage world, now people want sheets on trailers. So the problem we, get, the problem we have is that sheets on a silage trailer is almost going to be different to a sheet on a corn trailer or potato trailer. Now, the cross of these sheeting systems aren't cheap. They are, you can easily spend three, four, five thousand pounds on a sheeting system. Um, which is significant when you have a, a, a serious fleet of trailers. You know, you can start, you can soon get rid of half a million pounds on sheets. Now, the problem we have is to say the sheets for a silage trailer are normally the, the front to rear. The sheets on a corn and potato trailer are normally side to side, either on a hydraulic or on a manual. Now, Richard Westerns at the moment, we have seen in development this uh, a fantastic sheet system. It was at Lama this year. Um, and I do believe that is the future. And so we'll go, we'll be getting further into that as we get along. But that is a sheet system that is suitable for corn and potatoes, as it were. But also then you can put it back, put it onto the top of silage sides for silage. Now, that is an innovation. That is good. Now, we'll probably do a whole different video on that. Um, I think that that's, um, that will be a video on its own. But anyway, I'm going to show you the hydraulic sheet on a trailer. Now, another Stuart trailer. Now this is a 16L, which is a 16 ton long trailer, which means the size on it are lower than a short trailer. So for vegetables and potatoes, it's ideal. This was trailer number 03 or 23. HS is for hydraulic sheet, and D has a rear drawbar. Now, if you look at the trailer, it has a hydraulic, the operated rollover sheet, which is operated from in the cab. Now, great sheets work very well. The downside is that it's quite complex in fitting. So therefore this trailer really, to go and take up and put side sides on, becomes a whole big issue, far more complicated. So this trailer here, for example, will do corn and it will go and do potatoes, vegetables, parsnips or whatever, um, but it won't do maize. So, the versatility of some of these trailers is compromised by the fact that we're having to have so many variations of sheets. So, I say, it's not easy, it is complicated. There's a huge amount of things that involve these trailers. I think there's a whole idea of this video to try to give you an idea of the fact that when people bring up and order a trailer, there's those, so many different things to work out behind the scenes as to what, how and we're gonna do it. Um, I hope that's coming across this video. I'm not sure I'm making myself very clear, um, but there is a lot of work involved in these trailers. Now, <laughs> we don't just offer tippers trailer at GCS. We have a large fleet of flatbed trailers from 32 foot up to 37 foot. We have dump trailers um, from JPM Bailey. Now the Bailey dump trailers also have grain greedy boards basically so they can be used for grain so there are farms out there that still have very tight buildings um, to get in their farms and so they, and, they, and the roof of their sheds are reasonably lower so therefore a short bailey dump trailer will still carry sort of 14 15 ton of corn tipping in a low shed is ideal so <laughs> there are all sorts of variations of trailers that we have to try to cater for as many different sectors of agriculture and industry. We do hire into television, um, horticulture, etc. So there is an awful lot more to it, perhaps, than just having a, just being a trader hire. I think that makes sense. So anyway, I hope that gives you a bit of an insight into almost how we tr go about buying trailers, decisions we make into buying trailers, the types of trailers we buy, the types of trailers we run, a little bit of how we look after them 
Um, yeah, I think so. Right. Thank you very much for watching my video. Um, if you have liked it, please press click and subscribe. Also, please let us know your uh, any input you have into trailers. You know, what are your favourite trailers? Um, what are your experiences with different agricultural trailers? Um, we'd love to know. It certainly helps us with market research to find out more what a customer wants and how we can cater for that market. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Please click and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.